Hey everyone, today we're finishing what we started at the PAX West EVGA live stream. I was trying to take this apart, I ended up taking apart an older card instead because this one ended up having a very severe case of screw stripping, which tends to be what happens when you have no tools to work with other than whatever we can scrounge at a booth. So uh, I've gotten that screw out. So now we can finish the teardown. This is an EVGA 1080 Ti FTW hybrid. I think it's technically an FTW3. And it has the ICX stuff in it, uh, but it is supposed to be a bit different underneath from what we've seen with the SE2 hybrid. So very curious about that. I think we'll see some new stuff here that you all haven't seen in previous hybrid products. So it should be an interesting one to tear down. Before getting to that, this video is brought to you by Synergy, the software that lets you share a keyboard and mouse between multiple systems. If you have limited desk space and multiple computers to command, Synergy removes the need for separate peripherals or a KVM and works as an over-the-network software. Use our link below to get 50% off the home or pro version with SSL. So going over the basics on this one, the shroud is their new black plastic, very plain shroud. Uh, personally speaking, I, I don't really talk about visuals much on products, especially video cards, but I did prefer the one that felt more like a metal shroud. I don't know if it actually was, but the, the gray one that was very similar to the reference Founders Edition design, I thought that one looked a bit better, but not really an important aspect of a video card anyway, so no big deal. So let's take this apart. Same process as with all the others, except we've got one screw pre-removed, actually two or three pre-removed because there are problems. Uh, so we're gonna start with taking out the back plate and it's in two pieces, it's die cast. They are separated at the center, uh, primarily because from a die casting standpoint, from what I've been told, it's just easier to manufacture that way. Now, they've also told us that there might be some thermal benefit by having that divider down there. And I don't know how significant that is. It's probably, probably mostly, uh, because it was easier to make this way. I think more so. The, the, the thermal benefit may have just been something where they said, oh, this is, we can say this is a good reason to do this, but reality manufacturing is hard and die casting sometimes requires things like that for a large plate. So that's it for this first one. I think we're about to reveal the, u no, one more under the sticker. We're about to reveal the usual million EVGA thermal pads, which is a pretty good response. Considering the complaints about ACX were not enough thermal pads. Uh, like I was, I was talking to them, them about this at PAX and you know, it's better to be accused of spending too many pennies on something like a thermal pad, because ultimately it, is, it does come down to pennies, than be accused of not spending enough pennies. It sounds a whole lot worse if you're cheaping out on pennies than it does if you have to increase the price of the product a little bit to accommodate all the pads. Uh, this one does genuinely help when we tested it with ACX. That was actually pretty big support. This one should as well. Uh, and then we've got an LED plate here with foam on it probably for, well, I don't really, where does that even go? So the foam's over here. I don't know how much that helps. It might be like a vibration damping thing. That's probably what the intent is. But again, you know, you're talking about something like an FTW3 hybrid, looking at what it's priced, where it's positioned to the market. I think this one approaches 800. I haven't checked though. Talking about something like that, why would you, why would you skip a piece of foam if you think it'll help? Uh, these screws, by the way, there are two different types of screws in the back plate. I've heard, I think through EVGA, that this might change in the future for the next design. They might be changing screws out, which would be nice because the two types of screws, I don't know how visible this is on camera, but if we put both of them over here, one's got a, a wider, a different thread count, fatter threads than the other. So uh, they do, it does actually matter where you put them back into the card. Some of them won't fit in other places. I think the ones with the fatter thread count go all the way through to the shroud and the base plate because uh, they screw into plastic and then the ones with the thinner thread count go uh, into 
other elements on the other side of the PCB. Okay. So that comes off. There's all your thermal pads for that one. I've been working with Vega so much lately, I've forgotten what GDDR5 looks like and its variants, which is what we're going to get here. I think we can separate the, yes, we can separate the shroud, but we're stuck. So this one has a new, whatever you want to call that, hose clamp, I guess. Previously this was rubber. You could just pull it out and uh, this one is actually screwed in. All right, cool. So here we start getting into the interesting stuff. There we go, okay. Is that a white PCB? These are a little more expensive than most of the other colors just because they're less produced. And this is for the LEDs. So that cable is for the LEDs. I think this cable is for the, uh, one of these is for the GPM LEDs, which are right here. So those are responsive to the MCUs. There are two or three MCUs on this board. Uh, and those are used for temperature monitoring and things like that. So those LEDs follow the MCU instructions. What next? Let's, um, let's get rid of this. Small thermal pad for what? Two FETs. Small pad for two FETs. Is this aluminum? And how about this thing? So uh, this plate is new. I think, I don't think I've seen that before. Um, this is what those four screws on the back center are screwing into now. Previously, previously they had screwed straight into the plate. And the plate's a little different now. So, uh, first of all, <laughs> there's foam on the top. That's to theoretically help with noise damping. EVGA's had some pump noise complaints in the past. That'll help some of it. I, most of it would just be lowering the pump speed to like 90% PWM, which you can do if you plug it into a, a, an adapter and then plug that into your motherboard. So if you've ever had that problem, that's how you can fix it. But that's new. So, I mean, obviously it's covered up anyway. Kind of funny that they've still cut out the logo for their name considering it's hidden under this. But uh, yeah, that's different. What's really different is how it's mounted diagonally, which I guess would, would be part of why you wouldn't want to show, you, you know, you covered up with a shroud. Direct VRAM contact. This means that you don't have to worry about air getting to it. It's just going to sink into the copper plate. Copper plate's connected by a lot of thermal paste, probably. You can see it coming out around the edges here to the uh, CLC cold plate, which is also copper and protruded. And these, some reason, these have tamper seals on them. Something about, so about these tamper seals. Talk to EVGA about this on their live stream. And just like the one on the back, they were saying that these seals are not warranty void if removed seals. That's, I guess, misunderstood. Uh, they are actually just there to help EVGA know they need to inspect the card a little extra when they get it back to make sure everything's put back together properly by the user. But it doesn't void your warranty. It's, it's just like a notice for them. There you go. <laughs> so that's what I was talking about. There's all the thermal paste that connects the VRAM plate to the GPU plate. This actually does help. And uh, the reason it helps is because you're sharing the liquid cooling solution with the VRAM. And you only really need the GPU to be so cool anyway. After, the, after that point, once you're in the 30 to 50 range, it's fine to share some of the cooling solution with the memory, which can make more use of it. Whereas, uh, I mean, yeah, there's, there's no reason not to really. So that's the cooling plate. That's a little bit new. This elbow bracket at the end is new. And 
this thing's new. Let's pull off the VRM heat sink. That is a gigantic VRM. I can't remember if that's the same as the FTW3 or not. But there's your fan, back swept fan blade design. And pretty, pretty densely packed set of aluminum fins. This should be a pretty good thermal performer. We'll test it. But uh, at some point anyway, not anytime immediately. Cap cutouts. And everything else is directly contacted by a ton of thermal pads, as EVGA has done lately. Somewhat of an overcompensation, yes, but again, given what they just went through the, in terms of controversy with AT ACX, it's, uh, it's probably better to do that kind of response to show that they did listen. So I can't really blame them there for making a better product for their high end. Um, okay, so these are the same as the FTW3. So yeah, all these components. These are the 6930s, um, which we saw in the FTW3 as well. So this VRM, I think, is identical. I haven't looked at the FTW3 one in a little while, but we have videos about it from the air-cooled version of the card. Looks the same. It's just an, it's an FTW3 PCB. It's an FTW3 VRM. Uh, it's a new cooler. It's a different cooler. That's the only major change. Same bio switch up here. Same board layout. In fact, I think you could take an FTW3 air cooler and just mount it here and it would work. So uh, let me peel this off the table. So that's the FTW3, the hybrid one anyway. And uh, it, it's a good layout. I mean, we've seen, we've taken apart a lot of these now. I'm not sure how expensive is this one exactly. I know the previous ones were like nearing the $800 range. $850. Eight fifty new egg, eight fifty jet, eight fifty, eight fifty, eight fifty, eight fifty. Eight hundred and fifty dollars pretty much everywhere. So yeah, a little steep. You can get ten ATI is cheaper than that, obviously. Uh, in terms of core performance, like what you get out of box, they're not gonna be that different. The advantage of liquid cooled cards is generally that if you're willing to manually tune it, you and, and you would wanna remove the fan on the radiator, remove where it's plugged in and plug it into your motherboard instead. You can manually tune it to be better cooling and better noise levels than the air coolers. That's the advantage. Out of box, it's, it's a waste of your money for most people to spend $850 on this. It's a very well built card. It has a great cooling solution, but you don't need it. So uh, if you don't want to spend $850, there are 10 ATIs from plenty of brands, EVGA included, like their SC2 gaming or SC2 black cards, which are not the ICX ones, but they're, I think, 720 MSRP. Those will get you plenty far. Uh, but this kind of thing is basically, if you're willing to tune the cooler, the fan, uh, and things like that, then you can get a pretty good noise and temperature performance. It's just it does require effort, and it is pretty damn expensive. So not something we'd recommend for most people. But uh, it's out there. It's well built if you do want to buy one. I guess the main reason would be if you start getting into overclocking, where as we've shown with Pascal, Pascal's really responsive to temperature. So short of going with more exotic cooling solutions, if you are dealing with temperatures uh, or if you're dealing with overclocking where every couple megahertz matters, keeping the core colder will actually impact performance. Every 5 to 10 Celsius tends to show up in frequency. So might get a bit more headroom there, but uh, it's probably not worth the extra money for that extra bit of headroom for 99% of people. If you're the people who care, then great. Good, there's a solution for you, I guess. Uh, yeah, so that's the teardown. We might look into this more. I don't know if we'll do a for full review or when. We've got plenty of other stuff to work on, but thank you for watching. Patreon.com slash GamersNexus to help us out directly. GamersNexus.squarespace.com to pick up a shirt like this one, and I'll see you all next time.